Pope Saint Pius V is perhaps one of the most well-known and beloved popes. Known for his piety and his love for the Blessed Sacrament and the long hours which he spend in prayer and penance. But most of all, he is most known for enforcing the observance of the discipline of the Council of Trent and his zeal against heresy, to the point where he was selected as Inquisitor of the Faith in Milan and Lombardy, and in 1557 was made a Cardinal and named Inquisitor General for all Christendom by Paul II. But Pope Saint Pius V is known also for organizing the Holy League, that won against the Turkish fleet in the Battle of Lepanto on the 7th of October 1571, despite of its lesser numbers compared to that of the Turkish fleet. A blow so big that the Turkish power never recovered. And in this video, I will share with all of you this story and the miraculous vision given to Pope Pius V of the victory obtained by the Christian army in the Battle of Lepanto. May God be praised forever and ever, and may our Blessed Mother Mary be blessed for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Pius V, Saint, Pope. Born at Bosco, near Alexandria, Lombardy. Being of a poor though noble family, his lot would have been to follow a trade, but he was taken in by the Dominicans of Voghera, where he received a good education and was trained in the way of solid and austere piety. He entered the order, was ordained in 1528, and taught theology and philosophy for 16 years. In the meantime he was master of novices and was on several occasions elected prior of different houses of his order, in which he strove to develop the practice of the monastic virtues and spread the spirit of the holy founder. He himself was an example to all. He fasted, did penance, passed long hours of the night in meditation and prayer, traveled on foot without a cloak in deep silence, or only speaking to his companions of the things of God. In 1556 he was made Bishop of Sutri by Paul IV. His zeal against heresy caused him to be selected as Inquisitor of the Faith in Milan and Lombardy, and in 1557 Paul II made him a cardinal and named him Inquisitor General for all Christendom. In 1559 he was transferred to Mendovi, where he restored the purity of faith and discipline, gravely impaired by the wars of Piedmont. Frequently called to Rome, he displayed his unflinching zeal in all the affairs on which he was consulted. Thus he offered an insurmountable opposition to the admission of a 13-year-old into the sacred college. Again it was he who defeated the project of the Emperor of Germany in his time, to abolish ecclesiastical celibacy. On the death of Pius IV, he was, despite his tears and entreaties, elected Pope, to the great joy of the whole Church. He began his pontificate by giving large alms to the poor. As pontiff he practiced the virtues he had displayed as a monk and a bishop. His piety was not diminished, and, in spite of the heavy labors and anxieties of his office, he made at least two meditations a day on bended knees in presence of the Blessed Sacrament. In his charity he visited the hospitals and sat by the bedside of the sick, consoling them and preparing them to die. He washed the feet of the poor and embraced the lepers. It is related that an English nobleman was converted on seeing him kiss the feet of a beggar covered with ulcers. He was very austere and banished luxury from his court, raised the standard of morality, labored with his intimate friend, St. Charles Borromeo, to reform the clergy, obliged his bishops to reside in their dioceses, and the cardinals to lead lives of simplicity and piety. He diminished public scandals by relegating prostitutes to distant quarters, and he forbade bullfights. He enforced the observance of the discipline of the Council of Trent, reformed the Cistercians, and supported the missions of the New World. In the bull, in Cerna Domini, he proclaimed the traditional principles of the Roman Church and the supremacy of the Holy See over the civil power. 
But the great thought and the constant preoccupation of his pontificate seems to have been the struggle against the Protestants and the Turks. In Germany, he supported the Catholics oppressed by the heretical princes. In France, he encouraged the League by his counsels and with pecuniary aid. In the Low Countries, he supported Spain. In England, finally, he excommunicated Elizabeth, embraced the cause of Mary Stuart, and wrote to console her in prison. In the ardor of his faith, he did not hesitate to display severity against the dissidents when necessary, and to give a new impulse to the activity of the Inquisition. Despite all representations on his behalf, he condemned the writings of Connitz, who ended by submitting. He worked incessantly to unite the Christian princes against the hereditary enemy, the Turks. In the first year of his pontificate he had ordered a solemn jubilee, exhorting the faithful to penance and almsgiving to obtain the victory from God. He supported the Knights of Malta, sent money for the fortification of the free towns of Italy, furnished monthly contributions to the Christians of Hungary, and endeavored especially to bring Maximilian, Philip II, and Charles IX together for the defense of Christendom. In 1567 for the same purpose he collected from all convents one-tenth of their revenues. In 1570 when Soliman II attacked Cyprus, threatening all Christianity in the West, he never rested till he united the forces of Venice, Spain, and the Holy See. He sent his blessing to Don John of Austria, the commander-in-chief of the expedition. He ordered public prayers, and increased his own supplications to heaven. On the day of the Battle of Lepanto, October 7, 1571, he was working with the cardinals, when, suddenly, interrupting his work, opening the window and looking at the sky, he cried out, a truce to business. Our great task at present is to thank God for the victory which he has just given the Christian army. He burst into tears when he heard of the victory, which dealt the Turkish power a blow from which it never recovered. In memory of this triumph he instituted for the first Sunday of October the Feast of the Rosary, and added to the litany of Loretto the supplication, Help of Christians. He was hoping to put an end to the power of Islam by forming a general alliance of the Italian cities, Poland, France, and all Christian Europe, and had begun negotiations for this purpose when he died of gravel, repeating, O Lord, increase my sufferings and my patience. He left the memory of a rare virtue and an unfailing and inflexible integrity. He was beatified by Clement X in 1672, and canonized by Clement XI in 1712. The Memorial of Our Lady of the Rosary is on October 7 and the Memorial of Pope Pius V is on April 30th. Saint Pius V, please pray for us. Saints Peter and Paul, please pray for us. Our Lady, Queen of Heaven, please pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please do like and share this video with others. God bless you and have a great day.